Hello there, everybody, and welcome to 999.9, .9, our bonus video for nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. My name is Michael Gray, and with me today are my two lovely assistants, Paul Franzen and Nicholas Uprak. Hi, I'm Paul Franzen. And I'm Nicholas Uprak. And um, do either of you fellows want to explain what this video is? I know Paul said he wanted to, so I think we should let him. Okay. Uh I believe uh, what we're doing here is we, we, we loaded up some My Little Pony fanfiction, and we're all just going to read it for you. We're each doing uh, separate voices. I'm uh, doing kind of the deep, manly pony. Uh, Nicola's doing the little girl. Instant downvote. Oh. Well, no, no, no. We are not reading My Little Pony fanfiction. We are actually reading a question and answers video with the author of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. And... Basically, the game is kind of confusing, which you'll know if you've actually played the game. So people had a lot of unanswered questions. So we just thought, hey, let's go through this interview, this extensive interview with the author, and find out what the answers to all these crazy questions actually are. Does that sound this, to everybody? Yeah. That sounds great. Or should we get back to the My Little Pony fan fiction? I mean, I think that was a pretty solid idea. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, if anyone wants to follow along at home, we'll be having the questions right here in the video. Uh, you can also read the original interview for yourself at your leisure at axisgames.com slash 999. That's A-K-S-Y-S games.com. Okay, so let's get started with question number one. Were you influenced by Capcom's Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney series? I think Paul submitted this one, actually. <laughs> And he says, uh, not directly, but perhaps I was influenced some in the sense that Phoenix Wright allowed Japanese gamers to rediscover how fun an adventure game can be. Is this really an adventure game? It's more of a visual novel. This is novel. absolutely not an adventure game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I guess uh, on the spectrum that runs from visual novel to adventure game, it's like a notch away from visual novel because it does have some puzzles. <clears throat> but... Um, the, the ratio to, to puzzle from uh, puzzle to text isn't really that great. No. All right. Question two. Do you guys have any plans for new visual novel games? And I think the answer is probably yes. I, I think we're getting into this a little late, but since I already released a sequel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the answer to this is yes. Yes. Well, actually, it says here they have nothing to announce at this moment, uh, so <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Right. This is a running theme with some of the questions we'll see, where um, he wants everybody to mention 999 on their blogs and Twitter and spread the love, so the game will sell lots of copies. <laughs> and I guess I guess it succeeded because oh no 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 my voice don't do that. You guess it what? I'm 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 not talking anymore. Paul Paul <laughs> Nicholas doing the little girl pony. <laughs> Paul is now Sweetie Belle. It's decided. Question three, what exactly happened with Santa and June at the ending? Because they sort of disappeared an hour before the ending and nobody ever saw them again. <laughs> I like this so because this is a, the answer here. Uh, I, I haven't read through all the questions, but I'm guessing this is the first in a series of, well, this might have happened, but who knows because I didn't really think it out answers. <laughs> um, so his answer is, uh, to be honest, it's possible that what went on in Building Q might have just been the prologue to an even larger scheme. If that was the case, then you could say that they were heading off to prepare the rest of their plan after the true ending. You know, after playing the sequel, I'm not sure I agree with that statement at all, actually. Um, yeah. But the second game does have ties to 999, right? Um, you, you both have played it at this point. I haven't gotten to it yet. We have played it. I, I don't know how many... How oh. uh, yeah, we should... Yeah, all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, nix that then. Never mind. Yeah. Well, Clover, Clover is in the game. I think yeah. we can say that for sure. Yeah, I mean so she's that's... right there on the on the cover. <clears throat> I can't pronounce this person's name. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll pronounce it. Uh, given Ace's <laughs> obvious mental instability, why did they place a loaded gun in the coffin? Seriously, what what was June thinking when she put it there? Or was it Santa who put it there? Oh, and this is the cop out ending saying that she had to, um she had to completely reconstruct the future she saw. She had to recreate it exactly. Oh wait, 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 wait. So the gun was there because the gun was there. The gun yes. was there because the gun was there, yes. <laughs> sure. Okay. 
When she saw the gun in the future, the gun was there. But, but wait, okay, wait. Um, this is going to some time travel philosophy area, but uh, if she had not put the gun there, does that mean the gun would not have been there in her vision in the past? Would it have changed the past and then altered her memory of the past? Um, yes. So that's what she should have done then? Mm-hmm. Okay, next question. Okay, question number five. Um, everybody loves the plot and the characters. How did he go through in making the game? Oh, this is about the creative process. So he makes... Oh, all right, wait. Oh. <laughs> Before we get any further, who wrote these questions? I think the author submitted this one. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking, too, based on the wording. The characters and plot are all really well done. <laughs> I was curious as to how you made them so awesome. <laughs> Why are you so good at everything? Signed, me. <laughs> well, me. First, I start by creating a rough draft of the character's personalities. Then I make a sort of rough draft of the setting. Next, I figure out the twist and work towards that by coming up with a plot which, fix, which uh, fits the twist. So basically, the twist comes first. Um, after the characters and setting, blah, blah, blah. Then he completely changes everything... Okay, he's one of those authors who just, you know, redoes everything and everything and everything until he gets something he really, really likes. Okay. Uh, did, at some point in one of the videos, didn't we say that it felt like he came up with the ending first and then tried really hard to come up with something that led up yeah, to it? Yeah. Same. And that's, yeah, that's actually exactly what he did. So we're right. Okay. <laughs> and then at the well, end, this... he complains when he gets closer to a deadline. That helps, that helps inspire him <laughs> to come up with ideas. I mean, that, that seems like a, a reasonably valid way to write a story. I've never tried that really before, um, but that's because I'm, I'm a bad writer. I just kind of make stuff up as I go along and hope it'll make sense at some point. Usually what I do is I will plot out, say, like two chapters in advance, but still do a lot of making things up as I go yeah. along. Like when I was uh, when I was doing Life in the Dorms, I I kind of just knew what the overall themes of the game were and like what the premise of each part was going to be. And then I just completely filled in everything else and made up like whole characters and puzzles as I went along, essentially. Mm. Worked out okay, but probably not the best way to do it. I don't know. Something that sort of bothered me about the plot in this game is that like, I think they waited too long to introduce the supernatural element into it so that it felt like a cop out when it came, like mm. as a way to explain what was going on. Yeah, maybe like, he could have he could have hinted at it, at it a little more, maybe. Yeah, like in the second game, I didn't like. I went into it knowing there was all this stuff going on, so like it didn't really bother me. But like, right. I don't know if like if you're gonna write a book about vampires, then if if you say vampires at at, at the beginning and the twist is someone's a vampire, then it makes sense. But if you're writing some sort of like historical novel and then the twist at the end is like, oh wait, this guy's a vampire. <laughs> I see. Yeah, he, you you need to set up a universe in which vampires exist first, otherwise it just yeah, seems completely exactly. out of left field. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd think, I mean, if he was writing. Uh, to the plot twist, he would have been able to keep that in mind throughout the entire time. Mm -hmm. I, I think know, um, I think one of the problems is that you have multiple pathways too. But um, with the second game, they resolve that really well. So you know, it is possible to do that even with multiple pathways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I think the second game did a much better job. All right. Uh, I want to read this one. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Are there any plans for an expansion or a sequel? Possibly on the new Nintendo 3DS? Well, he can't announce anything at this moment, but it just depends on how well 999 does. If you mention it on blogs, Twitter, etc. and spread the love, that would be great. Right. I'm going to start keeping a tally mark. That's the second time he's asked us to pimp his game for him. <laughs> Question number seven. Why was Lotus in the second honorary game and not Nona? And uh, Nona was her daughter, for those Thank who don't remember. I was going to ask that. Just exactly. Where in the game did they mention her daughter's names? I think it was... We might have not actually recorded it. It was in one of the... I think it might have been in the one room that her and Seven go with you in. At the end, it's like the prison room or whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that has to be it. But, I mean, because yeah. Lotus doesn't seem to have any points in the game besides for the one puzzle. So, yeah. it's like, <laughs> why doesn't her daughter, who has actually been in the Nonary game before, appear? Mm. And well, funnily enough, that's that's basically what he says here. Uh, yeah. He says that because Akane saw Lotus, therefore Lotus had to be there. Yeah, uh, she was there because she was there, is the answer. But he does go on to say that if you don't care for that answer, then you can think of it as she needed Lotus in order to solve the puzzle in the laboratory room. 
Okay, well... So that literally was her only purpose. <laughs> it actually was. I'm gonna keep track of how many times he says it was there because it was there. <laughs> Alright, so your count's at two. My count's still at two. Okay, so we're okay. tied. We're tied. This is great. Number eight. <laughs> Lotus used to be a computer programmer. Why is she dressed like um, a dancer? What does she do now? <laughs> well, does she... Oh, she's a freelance programmer, and she's dressed as a belly dancer because she just likes it. Oh. So, like, that's, like, her casual wear. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's just what she wears. <laughs> my, my hobby is building model trains, so I dress as a train conductor most of the time. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Question number nine about one of those weird plot twists. So, um, June, she was not really six. She was really nine, and Santa was really zero. Why did his watch show three? Even if his three was really E, that would screw up, like, the number tallies. I barely remember this plot twist. Do you guys? Yeah, so it was, like, it was June and Santa four, went through this the door. Number. Yeah. Yeah, so they thought they were three and six, but it turned out one was zero and the other was nine. So it always added up to be the same. But what was the point of them changing their numbers, besides for making themselves look super suspicious? <laughs> they didn't actually change their numbers. I think they tried to use someone's, like, they used someone's bracelet and it turned out to be a specific number. But that meant there would have been two number sixes, right? Yeah, 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 because Cap's number was, like, a six. Oh. Yeah, something like that. So but why was it impossible that there could be two number sixes? I, I, that I don't remember. Okay. I, I <laughs> Yeah, that would... I think that was my question. I'm not sure that made it on the website. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, there might not have been an answer. I don't remember. Oh, um, okay. so saying yeah, E stands for empty. So that's how it made sense. So you're supposed to realize that three is a backwards E, and E is empty, which is why E is zero. But he realized, and I, I like his that... little uh, snotty aside at the end too. By the way, in hexadecimal, E is fourteen, and the digital root would be five. <laughs> Suck, jerk. Oh. oh, wait, I'm being too negative again, aren't I? I gotta stop that. Number 10. 999 is definitely one of the best games on the DS, bar none. Are there any other visual novel games, DS or otherwise, that you would recommend? <laughs> now, I, I really I really like his answer to this, because, all right, so the question was, so everyone's on the same page, I really like 999. Are there under, any other games like that for any other system? That, that you think would be good. His answer is, apart from 999, we don't have any other visual novels that have been localized in the U.S. We might consider releasing some of our other titles in the U.S. if 999 does well. Uh, make sure to post on blogs and Twitter about it. So that's number three for Michael. That would be great. So he... The, the, the question was, are there any other games that I would like? And he's like, well, we didn't make any other games that you can play, so the answer's no. He's like, let me uh, answer that question with an answer that doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> we made no other games therefore there are no other games you will like <laughs> okay number 11 um this was a question we actually answered in our video walkthrough why what's up with those puzzle rooms the puzzles don't seem to fit in with the stories 100 percent, and that's because we have org a japanese company who made the puzzle room sections independently or maybe oh, not. So it wasn't just like a different team within their company. They they actually outsourced the puzzles to a different company entirely. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But it looks like he did a couple of things. Like, I don't know. Like, um, I have absolutely no idea. Never mind. <laughs> it's, it's saying that uh, he, he did collaborate with them a little. He gave them a, a guideline for the puzzles, uh, participated in brainstorming, and came up with the message behind the puzzles, I guess, to make sure that they... Uh, were at least uh, tangentially re related to what was going on in the story and to the tone of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like there's a chemistry yeah, so puzzle, and then they talk about Ice-9 forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he says he was really particular about coming out with puzzles that fit the themes of 999 the best. By which he means making sure other people came up with puzzles that fit the themes the best. Huh. Number 12, what were your inspirations for the story? Would it have been possible to make the unique ending with a system other than the DS? <laughs> this game was specifically designed for the DS because of its unique interface. 
It has a top screen and a bottom screen. And that's how he came up with the twist. Oh, actually, that, that makes some amount of sense. Really? It does? Well, I mean, you would have had to do a split screen instead. I mean, each screen would have been a little smaller and harder to see otherwise. Question 13. What exactly is the final ending all about? Didn't we have this question already? <laughs> Okay, how can June still be the person who died nine years ago and she's living here? Why is the final puzzle upside down? <laughs> I get and questions a lot in Japan, too, but think about it from another perspective. So he is specifically answering U.S. questions here? I guess so. Mm. Yeah, I guess this isn't just a, a translated interview from uh, the Japanese website or whatever. This is one specifically for the English-speaking audience. Oh, my goodness. He just goes... So, I like that. The, were the Japanese fans uh, smarter and more easily understanding of the game? <laughs> <laughs> they, did, they didn't need the FAQ to explain the story. Uh -huh. Maybe it makes more sense in Japanese. No, I'm, I was saying that he's doing the exact same thing he does in the game. Let's go on a side tangent and talk about that for a half hour. <laughs> the huge block of text. Yeah, she even answers questions with huge asides. Why did they put all eyes, Alice, at the end of the real ending like that? Also, why wasn't there a cool CG with Junpei and Akane at the end? My god, I didn't realize it was all ice. That's so good. <laughs> oh, Paul. <It's> like, <laughs> her name's Alice, but it's all ice because she was in all ice. Oh, that's so clever. Her blood is really ice nine. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. What What is this answer? Was she really Alice? How do you know? We never show a real picture of Alice in the game. That's a lie. They totally did. No, no. That was only what J, J Dog imagined her to look like. Really? Really? That's, that's what he says. Okay. <laughs> so, wait, so his answer was, mm, maybe that wasn't her. <laughs> it's funny because um, in the sequel, that's exactly how she plays it off as. Wait, Alice is in the sequel? Yes, Alice is in the sequel. Oh, like... And she and Clover know each other because, you know, they were BFFs and they met at the end of this game. Okay, so so by by the time he started writing for the story for the next game, he decided it was canon that it was Alice then. Um, He decided her what? name was Alice, but he's not going yeah. so far as to saying, oh, she's a magical Egyptian princess from 200 years ago. Okay. 2,000 <laughs> years ago. But but it is supposed to be the same character we see at the end of 999, whether, whether or not this was the Egyptian princess. Yes. Okay. It's yes, that is true, and her name is Alice, and she was right in that area, but she's totally not the same Alice from here. It's so what totally happened? To, what happened to the actual Alice then? She just wasn't there. Oh. Why is June a crazy person? She places bombs in the Ninth Man in Nagisa Nijisaki. Sorry about that pronunciation. Uh, uh, which, which person is that? That is the Ninth Man. Wait, no. No, no, they cannot it's both be the Ninth Man. Snake and push through the door. And he also explodes. Remember the corpse that they dress up like, or the guy, they find the corpse and they think it's Snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The person that shower. Okay. okay. Yeah. He was one of the uh, original uh, people who ran the original game? Yeah, he's yes. one of the four okay. people in the original game. Yeah. So okay. she... Oh yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what it says right here. He was one of the people who killed her in an alternate history. And so she decides she has to kill them in the real history, because that's the sort of woman she is. Oh, wait, so June actually was killing these people, then? Um, yes. Oh. Wait, she she was the one... No, 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 she wasn't the one who actually, you know, pushed him inside the room. Well, no, but, uh... it, but... I mean, she put the bomb in his thing, and... Well, it says right here that she'd easily kill someone if she needed to. Her personality is a result of what happened to her nine years before. Yeah, so um, basically, yeah, she did set up Ace to kill three people. I, w I was still kind of holding out hope that uh, she somehow wasn't an awful person. No, it's a, perhaps there were things that happened on that ship that we couldn't show in the actual game. I'm getting, like, like some, some stuff was too messed up for them to show. <laughs> well, well I, maybe, maybe it's my favorite explanation is that she killed them because she killed them. <laughs> she's not really a horrible person. She just killed them because she killed them. So. Yes, she she saw she saw that she had to kill them because she had already killed them. So she had to preserve the timeline. Yeah. Yes. Question sixteen: How long did it take to write the actual script of the game? I imagine it would take a lot of extra thought to remove any plot holes and ensure the story all made sense. Did it really? <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, uh, he says that it took him about half a year, uh, but he was also working on the rest of the process of making the game. So it wasn't just six uh, months straight of just working on the game. Or uh, just writing the story, I should say. Solid answer. Yeah. It seems it seems pretty speedy, actually, considering how much text and how much story there is in the game. He completely dodges the question about uh, removing plot holes, though. <laughs> He's like, yes, that would have been hard. Question number 17. I would like to inquire how hard it was to write the script, as well as how many words, pages, etc. How an idea like the Nonary game came to exist. How each character was formed. How you decided what number each character would get. It's because I want wow. to play video games myself, and I'm wondering how this all came together, considering how well thought out it was. Originally, I had a simple story, a very simply story, ooh, typo, which was essentially <laughs> there are a number of doors with nothing written on them. It's always bad to have a typo when you're answering a question about how well you write. <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay, so there... well, that's interesting though. So we did start with like the the whole the nine doors thing, like, or I guess it doesn't say nine, but like that was the original concept. That was what he wanted to do from the beginning. Separate, separate, um. Brand. Oh, but Wait. but then his bosses said it's hard for us to visualize this story. We can't relate to it, and it doesn't catch our hearts. Because so they had on the mysterious panic, and then he pushed it to like, hey, let's do a ship, and they're like, yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Titanic instantly catches their hearts. So I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's very timely. The movie Titanic, you know, came out twenty years ago. <laughs> To, to do the rule about where each group was determined by the numbers, um, this or that story wouldn't sell. They came up with new characters, new rules, new stories. Do, do, do. I mean, to his credit, it is a very, very complicated story. I imagine it is kind of difficult to try to juggle all of the things you're that all the different plot points at once, particularly mm -hmm. when you have branch so many branching paths that each have their own uh, ending that. Uh, apparently all have to tie in together in order to make the entire story make sense. I mean, it's it's very complicated. Okay, so this isn't exactly a choose-your-own-adventure where you can just make everything up as you go along and no <laughs> ending has to relate to any other ending or even make sense in the context of each other. Okay, but here's the uh, last two sentences. Uh, for the character numbers, we just thought about the ending and who went in what group and worked our way backwards from there. <laughs> we made a huge chart in Excel and messed around with the numbers there until we got it right. Well, that makes some sense. So they actually did sit down and write down all the possible combinations of who can go through the number three door, who can go through the number seven door. <laughs> wow, that must have been so annoying. I hope they got like an intern to do that. I think that's why they put it in the uh, actual script of the game a couple points where uh, Clover, I think, works out the numbers. Like, we got to put this in somewhere after all this work. <laughs> to, show, to show everyone that we really did think all this out. <laughs> Question 18. Was having the characters break their usual stereotypes intentional or just a natural result of the story? What stereotypes? Did the character... I don't know. Did I, I mean <laughs> character stereotypes and then break them? Because I can't think of anything. Or maybe the idea is that he just didn't really follow any stereotypes for any of the characters. No. Yeah. Purposely, but I mean, they had a big guy that was dumb, I mean. I mean, his answer is he purposely wanted to use stereotypes so he could then break them. But I don't recall that ever happening. I mean, Seven well, is the big dumb guy, and he's the big dumb guy throughout the entire thing. Santa is the well, jerk, and he's the jerk throughout the entire thing. Huh. Well, I mean, there's June, who's sort of like portrayed as like the helpless, scared girl at first, and it turns out she's the mastermind That's behind true, it all. Yeah. Yeah, but they use um, stereotypes, plural, so it has to be more than one character. Let's see. Can we uh, <laughs> can we pull any uh, other? The, the the cute little girl who can turn out to be an axe murderer in some of the endings. How about that? Go with Clover. Although that's practically a Japanese horror stereotype at this point, anyway, isn't it? <laughs> that is. That's actually yeah. That's that's more common than them not becoming murderers. <laughs> Never trust small children in horror movies. <laughs> Um, okay, maybe the ninth man stereotype was person who's going to live through the entire thing. <laughs> broke that by dying prologue. Question 19. Was Akane or June phasing in and out of reality when she had headaches? I was at a loss to understand how she could have existed if she had died in the past. Hey, me too. 
<laughs> Maybe I sent this one in. <laughs> a lot of these are just you, aren't they, Paul? <laughs> uh, he says, yes, you're right. If she was dead in the past, that means she didn't exist in the present. So her headaches were there to show that you were approaching a past that couldn't exist. So is that, I guess that implies that uh, you're, you're, you're traveling down a path. The, the bad path, a bad path, isn't it? I think you guys were saying something like that during the playthrough, too. I mean, it makes sense that, I guess, that, well, it sort of makes sense that Jews is phasing in and out, but then why isn't everything phasing in and out? Because if she didn't exist, then that whole setup wouldn't have existed, you know? Mm. Well, I believe we learned from Back to the Future that if uh, you alter <laughs> the past, uh, only only the main characters phase out. That's true. Not, well. no, none, of the, none of the environment, none of the other people. Like, if you make such a, a, you can make a huge change in the past, and it still only affects, like, the people you already know, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And newspapers instantly change. News, yeah, that's true. And tombstones. Yes. Number 20. Do Connie and Jumpy meet again eventually? I was hoping for them to meet before, you know, the ending just sort of cut off, and they never meet each other again. Is Connie June? Connie June? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Connie. Yeah, okay. I thought, it, I thought it might have been a Street Fighter character, and I got really confused. <laughs> That's Cammy. Yeah, thank you. A, I knew I wasn't crazy. To watch. Uh, and the answer to this is uh, C, answer 14. And it's funny, if you go back to number 14, it says, um, go back to number three, which was, what happened to June and Santa after the true ending? <laughs> If you go to number three, it says go to number 20. I think yes, he's just... I was, was going to say, I really hope that's what it says. <laughs> okay, so the answer is that they went off to do phase two of their plan, which he hasn't started writing yet because he wasn't working on the sequel at that point. Question 21 is, what inspired you to use a ship as the main location for the game? And again, his answer is to go see a previous record. Yeah. Uh, and I believe he's he's telling you to go read the answer about how uh his producer said it was boring and he had to do something interesting. Mm -hmm. So he decided Titanic. Yes. Yeah. Well, people like Titanic. My mom's obsessed with the Titanic. She has she has a chunk of coal from it in a display case. Huh. Was your mom on one of the um like the focus groups for this game possibly? <laughs> <laughs> it's not impossible. Now, see, if they had watched the Titanic movie uh, a bit more often, they could have had a romantic ending with June and J-Dog, and everybody would have loved it. Like in Titanic? <laughs> I don't know. I never actually saw that movie. <laughs> I think the ship ends. Uh, I mean, it crashes at the end, but they, they both live, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Is, uh, is their, their, their hearts go on, Michael. Don't worry. <laughs> Number 22, who killed me in the submarine ending? I didn't get that. Um, well, we didn't show the submarine ending in our walkthrough, but apparently Ace killed everybody in the submarine ending. And Lotus's missing bracelet was supposed to tell you that. Yeah, because Ace is the only person who would steal Lotus's missing bracelet, apparently. Uh, so wait, uh, I guess Lotus had died at this point? He killed everybody in that ending. Everybody dies, and June actually dies in... Uh, Junpei's arms. It's kind of sad. Oh. Well, wait, I don't like her anymore, so... <laughs> no, 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 this was one of the endings where she didn't die in the past, which means she didn't set up the Nonary game, so... But, no, there, there, there cannot be timelines where she didn't set it up. That doesn't make any sense. I know, but but if she, if she, did, if she did die in the past, then she couldn't have set it up. Then who set it up? Santa. 23... Why was Alice in the desert? If she wasn't in the coffin nine years ago, where was she? Where was she all that time? And the answer is C. We already answered this yeah, question. The, an the answer right. is maybe it wasn't Alice. Yeah. <laughs> Number twenty-seven. Okay, I'm getting a little tired, and we have fifty questions to go. Twenty-seven. We're on twenty-four. We're on twenty-four. You're right. Oh my gosh. Why did Seven Snake and even Santa insist that J Dog, I mean June, died nine years ago when clearly she didn't? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why did they? Santa was lying. Um, Snake was there, so Snake obviously was lying too. So, <laughs> wow, I can't believe um, Santa... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I love, I love this. If we are going to believe that Seven didn't lie, then we can assume that a fake memory was implanted into his mind somehow. Sure. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, let's let's come up with an excuse for Seven, but not for Snake and Santa. Snake and Santa are liars, to... but Seven is... If the I very... tried to explain that in the story, though, I was worried that people would think I was just coming up with random excuses. So I left it up to the player's interpretation. If it makes more sense to go along with Nicola's theory that, you know, they were in on the plot and they just lied to move things along, that's that's fine. And that's the only thing that makes, the, like, the fake memory implantation, how would they even do that? Is it, like, Inception? Is there an Inception side story? Because I would play that game for sure. You know what, Nicola? I think that's number three in the series. You just figured it out. Question 25. Do they ever catch up with um, Santa and June at the end? No, they do not. Oh. <laughs> this is no, a wait, wait, wait. <laughs> J-Dog goes on to spend the rest of his life chasing after her. Man, that is bleak. Yes. Oh, oh, I don't like that. I'm not I'm not accepting that as canon. Nope. Yeah, throw us a little bone here, author. No way. I refuse to accept that he just he lives to be an old man just trying to find her. <laughs> oh. And he is sad and miserable all the time. The end. I don't like that at all. Well, especially since I, I decided I don't like June anymore. What do you want? What do you want, Paul? Do you want like a confrontation when they finally meet, or do you want them to like you know fall? Well, I, I, and finally meet. I would accept him uh, realizing that she is a crazy serial killer and just not having anything to do with her ever again. And he just moves on with the rest of his life. You would accept that? I would be happy with that. That's better than him trying to chase after her and then never finding her for, for the rest of his life. Yeah, that's way better. You think after 30 years, he might just get a little bit bored and try something else, though. I mean, with his attentions, man, you'd think after, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Question 26. What were your inspirations when creating your characters? Did you take a niche or a cliche character commonly found in anime and manga and put them into this situation by adjusting them to the situation that they were in? Or did you take characters with traits from games you had previously made and just take them and put them in an entirely different situation? Mm, I think he just copy pasted characters because people say that's what he did with the sequel. Yeah, well, I think we had this this kind of question already. Uh, he was he was trying to make stereotypes and then break them later in the game. Mm -hmm. And he used an enneagram for reference, but I don't know what that is. I think this is kind of interesting. He says uh, he made a like he made a box and then he put his characters in it, and the story just progressed on its own from there. Um, and that's that's something I kind of see when I'm writing uh, adventure games is that I kind of just come up with the situation and like, OK, I know what these characters are and who they are and how they react. How do they react to this? And then it just kind of writes itself from there sometimes. So I can kind of see what he's going for there. Question 27. Will you publish 999 in Europe? The answer is no, they, they never did. So oh, he says sorry. he wants to, though. It just depends on how well it does in the U.S. Please support us. And I'm going to count that. So I think that's four now. Is for it. Well, are they are they um, going to release the the sequel in Europe? Oh, I don't know. They, I mean, they re-released uh, 999 recently. I guess it didn't get a European release when they did that. It must got, not have. Got new box art and everything, and they uh, they added uh, Zero Escape to the front of it too. So it's zero. They gave games officially Zero Escape, 999, nine hours, nine doors, nine whatever. No, no, no. Here we go. Virtue slash reward is getting released on. Uh, Europe, Europe in November 23rd. Oh, there you go. Okay, so why does America get it first, though? That seems kind of unfair. Well, they have to do, they have to, you know, go through and add all the all the O's and U's and stuff into the words. That takes time. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it it seems kind of too bad. You think they would release, like, um, maybe, maybe they'll release 999 in Europe if the sequel does extremely well. Yeah, people don't need that anyway. They can just watch our videos. It's good enough. What influenced you most in the making of 999? Many reviews mention the Saw movies, but I think there's more to the game than just basic horror movies. Oh, he likes Saw. What do you know? Mm -hmm. I never done Saw that one. Oh. oh. <laughs> you see, you have, have you seen those movies? <laughs> I, I think I actually watched all seven of them in between recording like videos eight and nine. Really? It was a this. Yeah. Movie marathon for Halloween. No, it didn't have to be a marathon. So you saw a saw. <laughs> I, I, I saw saw. I saw saw saws, actually. Oh. Did you watch I, it while riding on a seesaw? <laughs> because then you would seesaw saw saw. <laughs> oh, no. This, 
we need to okay. to the next question quick. Yeah, we gotta stop now. <laughs> We're stuck here. Okay, 29. This is about the scene where June connected with Junpei in the future. Can I safely assume that the world Junpei lives in is a future where June is saved? Uh, this is about the time paradox, and he says that's exactly right, and then sends you back to all these previous... <laughs> Uh -huh. Why? Well, this thing could have been like half as short. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to repeat the question. Yeah. We, we already... Question thirty is similar. It says, uh, "Are both Seven, who implied that June was killed in the incinerator, and Snake, who said that Akane died in the first Nandere game, accomplices?" Uh, and and it says, "See question twenty-four." Yeah, which is basically maybe. <laughs> Whatever makes the most sense. We report. You decide. 31, what exactly happened in the incinerator? Uh, what happened with June? Because if you watch the true ending, she just disappears. Mm -hmm. She's just gone. And that's his answer. Akane disappeared before the door was locked. She just disappeared off camera. Wow. Wait, like, like disappears and like literally disappeared, or she just kind of snuck off? She just snuck uh, off. Okay. While yeah. nobody was looking. That's his answer. I thought she might have been using some sort of psychic connection to get out of there. No, she just got up and left, and <laughs> nobody was paying attention. <laughs> okay, 32. What is the significance of Alice? And, and uh, you'll notice that we all just immediately started cracking uh, up as we all read this, and that is because the answer is, she was there to explain the Ice Nine. That's all. Why is the Ice Nine there to explain Alice? <laughs> uh subplot which could have been deleted <laughs> well i mean it's important for the sequel right no no it's not really <laughs> no number 33 is there any end secret not revealed i believe all the important parts have been revealed in the game but for more read my 73 question faq <laughs> <laughs> question 34 what was your favorite part of the game uh, and he says that his favorite part was the scene between Akane from nine years before and June J J Dog in the incinerator. I guess you could say this title was written specifically for this this exact scene. I wish that part could have been voiced. That was a nice scene. I liked it. They were both crying. The scene was fraught with emotion. <clears throat> I, I mean, the correct answer is obviously the elevator scene. Yeah, I mean that's that is unquestionably right. Also up there. But that's okay, because you guys were telling me before that the sequel is basically like the elevator scene, nonstop. Yes. Question 35. Uh, Nona, that would be um, Lotus's daughter, who was her twin? They seem kind of important, right? And he says, originally I was going to call her twin Nona, which is another word which means nine. I have no idea if they're going to appear in a sequel. Do they? No. Okay. Lotus is never mentioned. Although Seven gets mentioned at one point, Clover Clover mentions talking to him, like, last year. Uh, I mean, I assume at this point they must all be Facebook friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, number 36. If Santa and June are in the ship, and they're both transmitters, then who's the ninth person that should be Akane's replacement in the Nevada building? Paul, I think you asked this question. Or... Yeah, yeah, because uh, both uh, June and Santa, I mean, they're they're the siblings, and they were both in the ship and or the building or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, they were supposed to be separated, so there must have been someone else that got uh, mixed up. Okay, so he says that yes, you're right, Paul. So there were two sisters in the same location. Right. Wow, good job, guys. Cause, I mean, I imagine this experiment must have cost a lot of money to run. I mean, that's kind of a big mistake to make. I, know, I you hope that guy got fired. I know. You kidnapped 18 kids and you couldn't even keep them like separated by siblings? I mean, they couldn't have like, marked them or something? Or just like give them different hats or something? Question 37. Did Seven really have amnesia? <laughs> and it just says, go see the question where they talked about this already. <laughs> question again, 38 is, did Seven really, really have amnesia? <laughs> Once again, the question is, eh, who knows? <laughs> Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Number 38. How hard was it to create nine distinct people to interact in various ways? I mean, there was conflict, there was emotional stress and whatnot. Having nine distinct persons, oh, people, 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 okay, <laughs> to handle it and talk amongst the others, that seems like incredibly difficult. Yes, it was a real challenge. 
Although the ninth man dies pretty quickly, so there were really only eight characters. <laughs> but even so, it is still way too many for a single story. Story theory says you should really only have seven characters. Oh, Theor I didn't know there was a rule about that. And Game of Thrones does not follow that at all. <laughs> and they should. There's like a thousand characters. I, in uh, I can, I, I, we, we've, I've read, uh, like, I don't know, it felt like the first half of the book, but that's because it took a million hours, so it probably was only like two <laughs> chapters. <laughs> and I, I could not, I had no idea who anyone was. The TV show's only mildly better. Oh, see, I really like that series, but yeah, there's oh, like... Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. I, I, I'm not going to fight you over but it. But I mean, I, I mean, based on, music. based on our experience playing through this game, I think you can, you can see that I would have trouble with that. Oh, no, yeah, there's, yeah. like, you have to, like, there, there's like a cheat sheet in the back, like, wait, who's this character again? <laughs> We were, uh, I, I was listening to the audio book with my wife, uh, so I had her handy. Like, every time uh, they mentioned someone's name, she was like, okay, now that's this guy. He chopped people's heads off earlier, remember? And then there was a dog. <laughs> okay, I got it. Done. The wolf puppies, I like that part. Uh, sorry, I've derailed this. That's my fault. <laughs> what about something like the Chronicles of Prydain, where there are 30 main characters overall, but each individual book only has five main characters, so it doesn't get too confusing? Mm. Uh, they actually sort of do do that in the Game of Thrones series like the fourth book and the fifth book are actually split up into separate characters because they get to a point where there's just way too many for even <laughs> that book isn't that what they did in Lord of the Rings that's what they did in Lord of the Rings at the end of the, I never first, read that, but I'll at the, end of the first book they split it up the, the group splits in half and there's still way too many characters to keep track of I do like how he explains this in terms of Star Wars characters. Yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars only uh, has seven characters, right? There are no other characters like Boba Fett. Or... <laughs> well, Boba Fett has like 15 seconds of screen time. What about Yoda? Yeah, how did how'd R2-D2 make it over Yoda? Um, just one one aside about Lord of the Rings. Um, it took me until my second time watching the trilogy to realize that Aragorn and Strider were the same person. Totally threw me off as well when reading. <laughs> wow, it wasn't just me. <laughs> and, and also, where the heck is Tom Bombadil? I think he's going to be in The Hobbit. Really? No. Well, is he in, is he on, in the book? The Hobbit is being split up into three movies. They have to put in something. <laughs> because there, there is not enough material for three movies. Tom Bombadil is not in The Hobbit. Anyway, back to um, his actual <laughs> question. Uh, yeah, wait, was there anything else in here? Eh. I was going to point out the fact that he adds Darth Vader and the Emperor as optional characters in Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> wait, Darth Vader? Darth he is like is not... the character the entire series is based around. <laughs> he is not part of the main seven, though, Paul. So Wow. He does not fit this guy's main seven. Yeah, maybe he should have picked a better example. <laughs> Chapter 38. Okay, so why did they let Ace live at the good ending while all the other guys were killed? Considering the fact that Ace was the head honcho who was the one who planned the nonary game. You know, they only killed his assistants, they didn't kill him. Mm. Wow, and uh, the answer, again, supports the idea that June is just the worst person ever. <laughs> uh, she has so much hatred toward him, so much animosity, that she didn't just want to let him die that easily. She wanted him to admit that his, admit his sins and either be judged legally, or even just want him to admit his faults in public. Because that is way worse than dying, I guess. <laughs> Was Snake some kind of mutant or something? He certainly seemed to have some sort of inhuman strength in the safe ending. Yes, um, where he got shot like eight times and was still coming after Ace. Yes, yeah, Snake has the ability. Well, Snake has psychic powers, of course. We know that. Of course. Are you talking about him being shot to death? I like how he has to ask. What do you mean? <laughs> that... Is that not normal for people? Oh, his his love for his sister Clover made him a Superman. Aww. Aww. Made him immune to bullets, apparently. <laughs> yeah, because he's Superman. Just read the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. You were stupid for asking. The only part of the game where he opens his eyes, so apparently whenever he opens his eyes, he gets superpowers. <laughs> oh, also something, I don't think this is mentioned in any of the questions, but Snake's real name is Light. Yeah, that's I I, I read that in the, uh, the sequel, actually. I was like, why are his parents such jerks? Why would they do that? <laughs> well, is he blind from birth? 
I think so, right? I don't think they ever say whether he was blind from birth or if he lost his sight in an accident. Yeah, well, even if he wasn't blind from birth, that's just a, a dumb name for a kid anyway. <laughs> 41. The Ninth Man. Who was he? What kind of person was he? Is that the reason why the submarine was there? Oh, hey, maybe that was his plan. He was going to go straight to the submarine. Cause what submarine? Weren't you making fun of the ninth man's plan? Like, his plan is uh -huh. through the number five door, and then it's like, you're going to be stuck there, bro. <laughs> so you're going off the ship without the other bracelets. But it could be that he was just going to make a run for the submarine and then take off by himself, because he's a horrible, horrible person. Did he know the submarine was there? Was that like a carryover from the first game? I don't remember. Um, apparently, well, it was there because it was there, so... <laughs> but did he know it was there because it was there? Oh, no, he says uh, the ninth man had nothing to do with the submarine. How did she know in the past that it wasn't actually a ship in the future? Like, because she built it in the desert to look like a ship, but she didn't do it on an actual ship. She just reused the facility that Ace used in the past. Yeah, but but I, what if I mean in her past vision, as far as she knew, it was a ship. So she, didn't that mean she has to make it a ship? She had a very detailed past vision, Paul. Okay, okay. <laughs> she saw all that. It's amazing that she was able to remember all this when she was like building it. She's like, no, no, no. Well, I, I, I assume she I uh, she snuck off and immediately wrote down everything she saw. <laughs> But, um, okay, apparently he's saying the submarine was on the giant ship that Ace uh, purchased nine years ago, so they were duplicating that. That's why the submarine is there. I don't Which remember would make more sense if we went to the submarine ending, but we didn't, so nobody knows what we're talking <laughs> is, about. Is that why I don't remember a submarine? That's why you don't remember. <laughs> okay, it. yeah. That was, okay, good. I'm not, like, because I feel like that's something I would have remembered. Okay. That's an optional. I like how they ask him to explain the character. And his, uh, he's like, well, the ninth man, he's a coward, and he went crazy, and he exploded to death. Like, that's all you need to know about him. <laughs> <laughs> that covers everything. 42. Was Lotus originally planned to be Alice? It would have made all the gags about her age funnier. <laughs> I agree. That would have been a really great plot twist, that Lotus was actually <clears throat> Alice the whole time. And it, it would have explained why she didn't look like she was as old as she was purported to be. Yeah, it actually makes more sense than what they put in the game. <laughs> Uh, but according to him, we didn't have that in mind. However, I do agree it would have been fun in various ways to have had Lotus been Alice. So I think uh, they just didn't think of that. They might have. They <laughs> might have done it if they thought of it. Mm -hmm. Question forty-three: uh, Would you consider partnering up with Axis Games to continue to develop great visual novel titles for release in Japan and the U.S.? <laughs> if yes, then Axis Games will work with you. Work with maximum efforts to localize the game without flaws. The way this is written makes me think it was actually sent to them by Axis Games. It's like, <laughs> like it doesn't sound like it was supposed to be in the FAQ. <laughs> no, <laughs> like do you have any more games we can co-op with you on? He's like, ah, oh, let me put this in the FAQ. Uh, uh, surprisingly, there is nothing he can announce just now. But if we spread the love on blogs or Twitter or whatever, that would be great. That's number five now. <laughs> also, he agrees that Axis did a magnificent job in localizing 999, and I'm glad he's saying that because Axis is the one who's asking him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I do think that's a fair point, though. I, I think they did do a very good job. Uh, I, if it weren't for all the uh, Japanese names, I don't think you'd really be able to tell that it wasn't originally written in English. No, which uh, is a hallmark of a good localized game, as far as I can uh, I can say. <laughs> Question forty four: What did the robe Snake was wearing after you rescue him? Yeah, why was he wearing that robe, and what do the flags mean? Um, oh no, this is a huge block of text. Uh, the only other thing he could have wore, uh, cause someone else had taken his clothes at that point, or someone else was wearing his clothes anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only thing he could have worn, it says, were those cer ceremonial clothes in Building Q. Why did, why were they in Building Q? Well, for the ceremony. Uh, what? <laughs> because they were in Building Q is the obvious answer. Yes. I think um, Akane and Santa felt bad that they made space. <laughs> they made Snake naked, so they, they but gave him But Akane is a sociopath, clothes. so I don't know if I agree that that's true. Well, she's a sociopath, but she she doesn't like nudity, Paul. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It, it's explaining more. Who's who's Gordain? Does anyone He's know? the guy who sold the ship to Ace. All right. Uh, it okay. says the ceremonial outfit belonged to him. Back in the day, he and his friends were conducting strange ceremonies in the incinerator. I 
I want to hear more of this. Why wasn't this put in yeah. the game? As another Too side bad. note, as another side note, the nonary game wasn't Ace's idea. It was Gordain's idea. He would take young Englishmen who had accumulated massive debts and force them to play games on the ship, presumably inside the incinerator. He would enjoy the show. <laughs> I don't know. He would enjoy the, way, the show the with his this millionaire sounds. friends, and they would bet money on who survives. Uh. All the losers were burned in the incinerator as a sacrifice during the ceremony. This is the Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, saw, I read this book. After many years of this, Gordain died of old age, but the games continued. On the wow. final game, Ace participated in the final game. He was victorious, and he felt that if he could win the game, that he could come up with a better game. So he bought the ship from Gordain and then did the nonary game. They really should have put that in the actual story because that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, this 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 sounds this uh this really sounds like backstory that they came up with while they were developing the game and just couldn't really find a way to to fit it into the game itself. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Forty five in the X ending, did Clover escape or did she die because she couldn't figure out the nine Q thing? I believe she didn't make it out, but well, she kind of had it coming. <laughs> that ending, she basically just kills everyone. Okay. So Clover's not actually evil. No, she was just driven to madness, okay. sort of like a temporary. When insanity. I when I actually when I played the game on my own, that was what I thought because that was one of the endings I got. No, I, actually, Clover is kind of my favorite character in the second game. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm biased towards her. She, at least to me, she's by far the most entertaining. She says the funniest stuff. Well, you know, she doesn't go crazy in the second game, I don't think. I think there's That's also one a plus. plot line where she kind of goes crazy, but she doesn't hit anybody with a hatchet. So Yeah, there's a there's a couple points where she kind of almost loses it again, but she at least has good reason to. Yeah, 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 because of what happens with Alice. Question 46. Regarding the theory Snake brought up about June and Santa's bracelets, was June's really an upside-down nine and Santa's a zero? Oh. This is sort of a, connected to a question they asked earlier, but the what official you, answer is yes. What do they mean this is sort of connected to? This is the exact same question yeah, as we got earlier, isn't that's it? what I would think. <laughs> that is the exact same question, but I mean, huh, yeah, you're right. So I guess they must have, like, there must have been some message board or something where they asked for questions and they just decided to answer literally every one they got. <laughs> including the ones from corporate that had nothing to do with this. They <laughs> really should have set up a different email address or something. 47. Why was Child Akane controlling j Dog's actions in addition to existing as her future self? Or wait, there's no why. It was she doing that, and all the answers are check out previous questions. Yeah. I, so I don't think she's actually controlling him. It was just sort of like... Yeah, she was kind of just kind of telling him what to do, but not like literally taking over his body or anything. It wasn't like he was a puppet. Yeah. Yeah, she was just along for the ride. Little... Wait, I don't understand this question. Well, no, a child Akane in the past is a separate person from her in the. Why would why couldn't they simultaneously exist within the context of the game? No, l- l- a child June was just there for the ride and seeing what happened in the future. That 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 Akane. Okay. So she wasn't controlling his actions in the future. She was just watching them, I think. Yeah, no, but this question doesn't make too much sense. Like, I don't think they got the story at all. I think that's maybe why he didn't bother answering it. And just said, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, just read like, these oh, other no. questions. They, they might take care of it. Yeah, these, these actually don't relate to their question at all. Was that really June we encountered on the ship replica? You brought up Locke's socks, but you didn't really tie that in with the back of the game. Yeah, yeah, that was a plot line which just got dumped and forgotten about. Uh-huh. It's like, we need philosophy at this part. Let's throw this in. Yeah, so was it Akane's mind and a false body? So this is somebody trying to make it work, but he disproves that theory. What? What about socks? The the, <laughs> the lock socks or the ship of Theseus or John and Lucy. Yeah, we had this discussion. Don't you remember, Paul? Did we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> then yes, of course, I know exactly what we're talking about. And your answer was, oh my gosh, this is so stupid and pointless. Let's oh, that is, it. that's 100% your answer. You're like, of course, it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, then. was if, you know, my sock, uh, you know, there's a hole in my sock, and then I take a patch, and I... Oh, that thing. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. And I get a... <laughs> Ball had blocked that from his memory. 
49, there's a submarine in one of the endings. I'm assuming that is used for emergency escapes from the sinking ship. But where does the tunnel from building Q lead to? Nowhere. <laughs> well, actually, I, I really want to see the scene now where the ninth man tries to take the submarine out into the desert. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's the best ending. That's the true ending in my mind now. <laughs> that would have been a great, like, after the credit sequence in uh, some sort of timeline where the ninth man didn't blow up. Uh-huh. 50, there's a room behind the library which you're locked into. Is this room also on the ship? I mean, what's in that locked room? Because I don't see any reason to have the room where he just builds the puzzles. No comments from either of you guys. Next question. Yeah, yeah, that's the... Uh, that, that, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that one, that one kind of died for us. Question 51. As the creators, who were your favorite characters to design? One thing I liked was how, by the time all endings were completed, you really got attached to each of the characters, especially with the safe ending and Snake and Clover. So the safe ending would be our first playthrough. Okay. Oh, so safe, does that mean an ending that has to do with a safe, or like an it, ending wherever? Safe. The code to the safe was also the okay. to the coffin where uh, Snake was kept. Yeah, okay, because I think I've seen them reference that in here before, and I kept thinking it was the ending where everyone was safe. <laughs> it was a poorly named ending. Actually, I actually have the word safe. It's just a picture of a safe, and people came up with that name for the ending. I see. Uh, and he says that his, his favorite character was June. His intention was to create the world's worst heroine. <laughs> but how well did that work out? I would say pretty well. Uh, she's pretty bad, but there's still some sense of purity in her, and she's also noble. I guess you could characterize her as a genius. Is she uh, he goes, noble? Where's he get uh, that from? His, her motives are too grand in scale for an ordinary person to ever understand. I, I guess so, because as far as I could tell, her motives were to just make sure that she doesn't die. Yeah, yeah, nobody could understand that. <laughs> well, it's well, a... I, guess, I guess this game's too deep for me. 52, Lotus and Seven. All of the other characters had their real names revealed by the end of the game. I guess this is just a minor detail, but I, it'd be nice to know what are Lotuses and Seven's real names. What a weird question. I can just imagine this person being kept up at night. It's like, I don't know their real names. Well, the uh, answer's kind of weird, too, because it says that in the Japanese version, the version Lotus's name is revealed. Uh, it's revealed in the torture room. But not her but I guess, name. But not mm -hmm. in the English version. They like The localizers are like, hmm, I don't think so. No. Her name means August. Which which month of the year is August? Eight. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, seven did not get a name. Seven did not get a name. Yeah, I like seven. Oh, her That's husband good was named. His her husband's name was one. So eight plus one is nine. So that's why their daughters both have nine names. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guy picks a theme and sticks to it. <laughs> no wonder they got kidnapped for this number themed game. It wasn't just the fact that they were transmitters. It's like, well, their <laughs> names are already nine. Oh, 53 is a question about uh, a possible sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have done this video sooner. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Read the question. Uh, All right. Question 53. If there was to be a sequel, would it be a direct one or one set in a different timeline? like future or past slash alternate universe or something different altogether. Uh, he says, if there was to be one, I would come up with a com with completely different characters and then mix that's in some <laughs> of the characters from 999 and build a story from that, uh, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's what they did. That's exactly what happens. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, this would go. still be them stuck in a room that they can't get out of. Storyline would be after 999. Of course, this is all hypothetical. <laughs> All you have to do is share your, the game, your love for the game on Twitter and on your blogs. <laughs> he doesn't say it in this one. That's no, strange. he doesn't, so I can't count it. That's amazing, huh? This must be him from an alternate timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Question 54. Supposing that J-Dog and the Ninth Man did come up with code names, what would they have come <laughs> up with? Hand or Star or Penta? And Ninth Man, Pigeon. 
55, I just wanted to see if you could confirm or deny the theory that whenever June started becoming feverish, okay. it meant that J-Dog was going down the wrong path. We wrong heard path. this exact question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, he didn't even edit this right. <laughs> it's like, you already said this, you already said this, you can cut this out. The answer, unsurprisingly, is you were right. <laughs> refer to the previous question. Also, as you and like to say, uh, she gets the fever because she gets burned in the incinerator. That's why. That's where the fever comes from. Yeah, she dies by fire, so she has to have a fever. That seems cruel. Poor June. <laughs> <laughs> could she have died some other way? I don't know what other way they could have killed her, though. She just falls dead. <laughs> well, at least she didn't actually just burst into flames right in front of you. That'd been traumatizing. <laughs> Question 56. I've heard that the bottom screen represents June's perspective of the Nonary game in the past. When J-Dog finds the key cards with photographs in the cargo room, they're of the current Nonary game participants. This would be impossible if it was still June's perspective, as it shows all the participants of J-Dog's time. Is the inventory the only exception to the a June perspective idea? Uh, and he says, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> he says that I was very sharp of the questioner who may or may not have also been him. Uh, this is something that was pointed out by his debugging staff. Whoops. If you could make an ex exception and just say that this was something June saw through J-Dog's eyes, that would be great. That That's an actual literal <laughs> quote. That's actually what he said. I would really appreciate yeah. <laughs> That would be great. If you could ignore this plot hole, that would be great. No. 57. What were the actual values of everyone's bracelets? That's my <laughs> question with all the nonsense they brought up about different numbered bracelets <laughs> he, doesn't even, he just says yeah they were what you saw besides that ones we yeah the site for already. santa and june cool 58 i heard a rumor that the nine characters are based off the enneagram thing that i don't know about <laughs> yeah if that's true which character represents which uh, this has nothing to do with their numbers the order is totally different in japanese translation of enneagram what is this enneagram do i have to look this up now I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, it is a, it's a model of personality, a kind of personality test, it sounds like. We, oh, here we go. Uh, it's a model of the human personality that uses an Enneagram figure. Oh, so an Enneagram uses an Enneagram figure. That makes yes. so much does that, sense. <laughs> does that help? A <laughs> uh, model of human personality principally used as a typology of nine interconnected personality types. Uh -huh. Well, Enna means nine. Uh, Greek. And I'll just I can read the uh, the nine types real quick: reformer, helper, achiever, individualist, investigator, loyalist, enthusiast, challenger, and peacemaker. So I guess the question is then: uh, were the nine characters based on these different nine uh, character tropes? Mm -hmm. and I, I like how signed they, they, he actually lists like who was who. I like how Seven was such a bad investigator that he's not the investigator out of these <laughs> nine. Like that is his job, That's but he's hilarious. the helper. <laughs> Snake he is the investigator. He was a detective. Yeah, the blind guy is the one who's the investigator. <laughs> the actual detective, nope. He's yeah, the helper. So, uh, so Snake's the investigator. Ace is the achiever. Santa, the enthusiast. Is he enthusiastic about anything? Wrong. Okay. <laughs> about murder. Clover loyalist, I can see that. Mm -hmm. that Very loyal to her brother. How would... J-Dog the challenger. challenger. <laughs> Does challenger mean Peacemaker. he finds it very challenging to solve puzzles? <laughs> that makes sense. June oh. is the peacemaker, uh, being the person in this game who is kind of a mass murderer. <laughs> yeah, it fits perfectly. Yeah, uh, J-Dog always goes along with the flow, and he never interrupts or contradicts anybody. He would be a much better peacemaker, and June would be a much better challenger, I think. It's weird. I, I get the impression that uh, he – I think he really, like, likes June as a person, and he, he's kind of just looking past all of the horrible things she does. This and is kind of frightening. She she really wants uh, her and J-Dog to be together. She thinks – he thinks that he really is a peacemaker. Very strange. Uh, well, no. Seven is – J-Dog's going to spend the rest of his life oh, after her. No, that, that was not canon. <laughs> that was not. Uh, Seven is the helper – uh, I mean, he just helps, helps, helps breaks down board, sure. doors, yeah. Lotus, uh, the individualist. And the ninth man, the reformer. <laughs> sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, man, the second part's even better. What? He goes on to compare each of the characters to a character from the Star Wars universe. How is yeah. the ninth man Darth Vader? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh wait, that's uh, that's what he says he... afterwards. Immediately afterwards, it's like wait, I'm fan Darth Vader. That doesn't work. Uh, the other ones are Ace as the Emperor, Snake as Obi Wan, uh, Santa as Han Solo. That one actually fits pretty well. Uh, both the way he does it. Works. Clover as R two D two. Okay, wait. Um. The next part's a little uh, disturbing for me personally. Yeah, this is creepy. <laughs> J Dog is Luke, June is Leia. Uh, He's got Santa as Han Solo and June is Leia. That that's. Oh yeah. Oh wow. I don't think he <laughs> saw the second movie. <laughs> or the third one. I don't know. He just uh, saw seven, the prequel. Seven as Chewbacca, which is kind of perfect. Though. Yeah, that one fits. Yeah. Okay, I love that one. Uh, Lotus is C three PO. What? <laughs> I like how the, the questioner didn't ask him to do this. <laughs> nope. <laughs> he does it anyway. Although I'm, I'm kind of seeing, we were uh, talking a lot throughout the videos about the uh, pony artwork. I kind of want to see this art now. Can, you want to see just... Seven as Chewbacca? Can someone <laughs> please draw R2-D2 as Clover, or vice versa? <laughs> I really want to see C-3PO as Lotus, like in her outfit. Question 59. I'd like to know more about Seven. Was he faking amnesia all along? Oh, this is... Uh, How many times do we have to answer? <laughs> this is the fifth time. This is the same question. Well, you know, the people who are asking these questions got amnesia, so... Uh, well, I, I'm sure these questions were all asked <laughs> independently of one another, but, like, he didn't have to... Or whoever put this together didn't have to include them all, you know? Well, oh, well, I mean, he's bringing up, like, the false memory implantation theory, and they, like, <laughs> the headaches are just like Akane's fevers, that, you know, seven no. the headache when you're going towards... Oh, wait, so now he's he's actually supporting the headache theory? No, I refuse... That's not canon. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> that makes it much worse. The headaches were because the memory had been implanted in him. Wait. Started to show by, discrepancies with reality. By, by whom and for what purpose? And how. And how. No, it, it doesn't matter. They're not canon. I've decided. <laughs> Just like the ending with, with J-Dog spending the rest of his life trying to find Also it. not canon. No, yeah. I don't care what the actual author says. Question 60. Okay, PC visual novels have higher resolution, like 640 by 480. Man, that is a great resolution guy. <laughs> okay, so he asks um, how large the pictures were drawn, right. and they were drawn yeah, at uh, 1024 and 678. Really, who's oh, using okay. a computer monitor with 640 by 480 still? <laughs> I mean, Man, you can ask one. You can ask one question to the author, and this is what you ask him. <laughs> yeah, I'm still kind of hung up on the 640 480 thing. Like, I hope you can play that in full screen, because otherwise, <laughs> you have to use a magnifying lens to see it. <laughs> That was the problem with the Indiana Jones Christmas game, actually. It, it was in, like, 240 by 400. Yeah. And you could not play it full screen. Wow. So it was impossible to read anything. What couples do you... Wait, hold on. What couples do you folk actually see as canon? The, the, the fact that they use folk here is throwing me off. I mean, June and Junpei act, seem pretty canon, but is there a possibility of Lotus and Seven? And the answer is yes, that is totally canon. Mm. She is divorced after all, which means but, which but, means it is possible. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, in what in what scene do they like do they even interact that much? He calls her an old lady and refuses to go with her through <laughs> one of the doors and she says she hates him. <laughs> I guess hatred is what most good relationships are based on well how yep. <laughs> in, the, in, in the door we didn't go through where we find out more about lotus and her daughters seven goes through them goes with them i think that is true and i can't quite remember their interactions from that door it's been too long ago i don't remember them being like super antagonistic but nothing that would lead me to believe that there was a love connection there it's the love connection <laughs> we need to we need to start moving michael's starting to sing <laughs> Besides, June and Junpei can't be canon. They, he already said that Junpei lives a le the rest of his yeah, life. Yeah, that, that's miserable. actually like definitely not canon. <laughs> Sixty-two. How did Seven get his scars? He didn't have them nine years ago, and the answer is he got them in the you know sometime in between the two events. <laughs> Why does this question remind me of the Dark Knight? I don't know. 
That's the best oh. movie, right? Yeah, in, in that movie, the Joker's always asking people, do you want to know how I got these scars? Oh, how did he get them? He changes his story every time. Oh, well, that's not very fun. <laughs> um, I, I, I need to draw attention to part of this answer here. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys... Uh, it's, it says that he was battling... This is This is how he got the scars. Quote, he was battling against a particular powerful global organization. What? <laughs> I thought he was like a private detective. Yeah. How did he get roped into this? Also, he I mean, he gets he got promoted to the FBI at some point. <laughs> I guess I mean, he does show very uh, strong problem solving skills. Mm -hmm. After he saved those kids on the ship, they're like that, that he got promoted to the very top. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm checking the enagrams to go back to the enagrams. Just looking at here. Seven is the helper and his basic fear is being unloved. <laughs> well, his basic desire is to feel love. That's that's the helper's personality type. So I think, yeah, him him and um, Lotus are definitely canon because he wants to be loved. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better which, about the fact that Lotus, June Pei... She was the individualist, so her fear is having no identity or significance, which kind of fits, actually. She... And her vice is, is envy, actually. Hmm. Question 63. If June was, in fact, zero and Santa was assisting her, was she responsible for planting the bombs into the cradle of pharmaceutical executives? It doesn't seem likely, given how inherently altruistic she is. Okay, so this what? was written by the, uh, the, <laughs> by the author. <laughs> yes. Uh, if not, why did she admonish Santa when the ninth man blew up? Uh, and his, his answer is, you're That's... exactly right. I guess you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. She's terrifying, huh? So... You know what this means? There was a like a scene cut from the game where she is um, like surgically opening these people and putting bombs inside their stomachs. Oh, oh but it's okay because she's inherently altruistic. <laughs> well, no, Wonderful she didn't. Person. She didn't cut their stomachs open. She just fed them like the pills with a tiny bomb okay. inside. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's less disturbing. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, no, that is exactly what happened. I think they mentioned okay. that at like the very beginning of the first video. Okay, good. That's it's in the we'll, first video. We'll... Yeah. We'll definitely say that. And we'll say they were normal pills, not suppositories. <laughs> <laughs> Question 64. In what year do the events happen? And they happen in 2027. Which is correct, um, according to the second game. So, hooray. Question 65. How did June and Santa manage to pull off staging the second Nonary game in the first place? Did they very... manage to finance it, reset, refurbish, use the facility, and kidnap such important people all on their own? I get the why of it. It's just the how that really doesn't add up to me. And also, is June just acting innocent, or was she actually a much more ruthless person than she portrayed herself? Yeah, wasn't that a question you had, Paul? It's like, how did they manage to fund such a humongous thing? And I said yeah. it was because she used the stock information from the future. That's right. <laughs> she wait, pulled wait. a Biff Tannen. You, you said that. Was that actually true? That's oh, I guess right that's, that's here what the, in that's this what it answer, says in the answer. She told her yeah. brother to buy stock and cradle pharmaceutical when it was cheap so they made a ton of money because that was ace's company cradle pharmaceutical so they used stock from ace's company to fund this experiment which would kill everybody in the company and uh regarding is she really all that innocent it just uh sent you back to the question where he says she's frightening Yikes. It's before long they were millionaires and eventually formed an organization to help with the execution of their plans. So they've they formed an organization of kidnappers. Maybe That's that terrifying. was a particularly powerful global organization that uh, Seven was fighting. <laughs> the more you read about this, the scarier June is. Like she's one of the like great supervillains of all of games. Yeah, I kinda wish all this stuff was included in the game. Uh huh. It makes her I mean it makes her more interesting. It makes me, again, not like her, but <laughs> It adds depth to her character rather than yeah, just being does. the cute girl that you liked a long time ago. <laughs> number 66. How did Clover know that the number discovered from the Truth is Gone riddle was for the safe in the piano room behind door number 5? She didn't go through door number 5. <laughs> so this would have been in the safe ending where she goes to door number 5 to open up the safe even though she doesn't have any idea it exists apparently. Okay, apparently she found a note. <laughs> this is a great explanation. There was a second note, which was never seen in the game itself. <laughs> she told her about the safe. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, the answer to 67 is awesome. Yes, it is. I was just thinking that, too. Read the... I, I have a feeling Michael's going to sing this answer. <laughs> I won't sing. I'll be quiet. Oh. Man. All right. Question 67. One tiny question when it comes to an individual's ability to transmit and receive messages from the field. Considering June Pay's ability, was he born with them, or did he awake, or did they awaken mainly because Akane was, had such a strong bond with him in the first place? And the answer is... Yes, it was the power of love. So, okay, this brings no, up, wait, wait. This brings up the question of um, June being a horrible person. He still loves her after all of this. Yes, yeah, so this isn't like an abusive relationship. Well, you I was wondering too, like, is the love reciprocal? Because it kind of seems like. She just went all through all like everything else she did. She did because she knew that's what happened. So it kind of sounds like yeah, this love is not yeah. reciprocated. Yeah, <laughs> in which case it's not love. Sorry. Yeah, uh, at least according to this, like she never makes an effort to try and contact him again. The story so. is horrifying. She just used him as a part to get what she wanted, which makes her even more terrifying. <laughs> Well, I mean, she wanted to live. You think she could have at least, you know, sent him a postcard or something, maybe a Christmas card, <laughs> like a gift card at least. Well, he would have used hey, it to track her, me. though. Well, no. What 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 she could have done is just, you know, <laughs> if you've ever done this trick, it's like instead of like mailing the letter to the address, you write that as the return address and then ship it with insufficient postage. Oh wow! I could see her doing that. She's pretty clever. Question 68. Who is the Zero speaking in um, the first ending, the ending from the first playthrough? Is it Santa? Do you guys remember that at all? Um, Paul does, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it, that really That's stuck with me. That's where June is dying. Didn't we do that in, like, January? <laughs> <laughs> he had June in his arms and she was busy dying and she was on the ground and he heard something from the hallway so he gets up and runs to the hallway looks around and then he turns around immediately and she's not there anymore so we're thinking she just disappeared out of existence at that point mm -hmm. so how could she have been like is it supposed to be young her from the past maybe yeah young her from the past is saying way to go j dog you totally screwed up now i'm gonna die in the future they're saying the person who made the noise was Santa, but he didn't see anyone in the room, so maybe like Santa was crouching behind the coffin and talking. Uh, Santa was just using the voice box, though, because it was through Zero's voice, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. So Santa was someone ooh, else using ooh, voice I box. like the next question. <laughs> okay. yeah, did, did you write sorry, this one? Sorry, I got, I got bored with that one and looked ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Question 69. Does J-Dog realize that June risked his life and the lives of six others, not including her own, by setting up the second Nonary game? Or does he simply not care and loves her despite her selfishness? <laughs> <laughs> when he yeah. realized the truth, he understood everything, and that's why in the game, despite all these horrible, horrible things, he still felt the need to save her. Because he didn't, he didn't want your old girl to die. He did have strong feelings for her, yes. Wait, that... I, I like this. He says, I suppose you can <laughs> selfishness. Like, this dude is completely in love with June. The writer, I mean. The person who wrote this game is. is totally head over heels over this, this <laughs> psychotic, evil character. He is Junpei. This is the <laughs> uh, author insertion. Yes, Mary Sue. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Well, his rationale is if J-Dog didn't save her, then a 12-year-old girl would die. But J-Dog is such a nice guy that even if it was somebody he didn't know, he would have saved them, because J-Dog's just that kind of guy. The stand-up gentleman. J-Dog's kind of a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I kind of worry about the guy who asks this, but <laughs> what are the heights of each character? What are the measurements of the female characters? Bust, waist, hips. I think <laughs> the author himself who wrote this question. <laughs> he, he's super excited. Decided to answer it. Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't. I. I'm just gonna say I do not believe him in his answer. He says that I'm sorry. I didn't really give the character specific attributes like that. 
BS. There is no way you didn't sketch all of that out. <laughs> There's no way. I like how they ask him about all the characters, but he just talks about Lotus. That's the only <laughs> one he's concerned about. <laughs> can I? Can I? I want to read the end part. All right, go for it. Uh, uh, blah, blah blah. Something about her. Yeah, uh, he knows that. He just knows that she has big breasts. That's for sure. She used to live in Silicon Valley, but her breasts are not filled with silicon. They are all natural. <laughs> Uh, he he actually that means he had to type that out. He's like, yes, I like this answer. I'm going to put this on my website. Um, as a person who lives in Silicon Valley, can I just say we're sick of that joke? Please stop making it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, universe. <laughs> Seventy-one. What did Snake hear when he paused for a moment in door five? They never address that again. <laughs> and answer: yeah. He was listening to the team that went through door number four. Oh, that's a boring answer. That is... I think they actually explain that in the game, don't they? Um, they explain the fact that he has super hearing because he's blind, but they don't explain the fact that, oh, hey, that's the thing I was listening to at that specific moment. Okay, well, since J-Dog saved June in the alternate timeline, will, the, will J-Dog ever find adult June somewhere in the present? I'd love for them to have a reunion in the timeline. They're such a cute couple, and it's so sad no. you couldn't find them after they escaped. This person all, clearly did staffing. not read all of the other answers in this yet. Yeah, yeah. June is terrifying. Yeah. But given 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 her circumstances, she had no other choice. I don't I don't believe that though. I think she had a choice. I think she could have at least stuck around for like five minutes before taking off forever. Well, why Why couldn't, if J-Dog's so infatuated with her, couldn't he have just run off with her? No, because yeah. he disappeared when nobody was looking, right? Well, I. Well, why didn't she bring him along? Well, I guess she didn't, oh, that's right, we decided she didn't love him, so. Yeah, no, she so was just using cool. him. Yeah. yeah, that's why. That's cool. Oh, yeah, so that's why she's avoiding him. It's It's just like, you know, she had a bad breakup, and it's the ex she doesn't want to see ever again. Did she ever, like, <laughs> file a restraining order against him? <laughs> I mean, him spending the rest of his life trying to find her is kind of creepy in its own way. It, he just needs to find her super huge criminal organization that kidnaps people. That shouldn't be too hard, right? <laughs> I'll lead him back to her. Um, is, June, is the June that kind of presents herself um, during the game how she really is? Or is she really more like Ace, just acting and really kind of crazy? Also, um, it implied that the group was going to meet up with June and Santa during the true end. I assume this means that the group didn't hold any ill will towards June and or Santa. You know, that person has a point. It it was in the true end where they are trying their hardest to catch up with June and Santa. Yeah. Did, did it say that they wanted to be, like, be friendly and shake their hands or they're like, we need to catch them because they got to go to jail too? No, it it was like um, she, Lotus was saying, hey, Clover, step on the gas. We have to catch up to them. So go as fast as you want to. Right. Yeah, but catch uh, up like to them to like be friends though, or to catch yeah. up to them and yeah, no, it just says place. they yeah. want to catch up to them. It doesn't say we want to catch up with them because well, we it's, want it's... to give them the handshake, or <laughs> if it's like we We're want to catch them. up to them because we want to strangle them for putting us through this horrible, horrible situation. Yeah, the answer to this is kind of interesting because he seems to be saying that the people who played the Japanese version of the game didn't really get the impression that June was a horrible person. Mm -hmm. So I wonder. Uh, I mean, actually, I don't. I I can't see. I can't see how that enough could be changed just from the the game that would. Uh... Well, no. I think um, the way I'm reading his answer is that more people in the U.S. want to see J Dog and June end up together, whereas oh. the people <laughs> of Japan just accept the fact that she's a horrible person, and it's like, okay, yeah, let's meet each other again. We need to talk to these people that want to get them together. I mean, they should meet up, but only so uh, June Pei can slap her around a little bit for being a jerk. Well, I, I like this part later, though. As far as how the other five feel about uh, Akane and Santa, I'm sure they have mixed feelings. <laughs> I feel like that's putting it mildly. Yeah, if the mixed feelings are confusion and rage, then yes, those are technically mixed feelings. It's true that the bracelets didn't have detonators in them. It is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Okay. she only put them in the bad people's bracelets. Cool. Oh, okay. Uh, nor were they actually implanted with bombs, but they were lied to. Still, they were lied to so they could save a 12-year-old girl. Now... Now, technically, that's true, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's how she was seeing it. No. <laughs> she's like, well, we have to save this 12-year-old girl. It was, I have to save myself, and who cares who blows up to, to make that happen? 
Uh, she said, uh, rest of the answer, I feel like they are in a situation where they want to hold grudges, but at the same time, they can't really bring themselves to do it. Why? Why can't they? I don't understand that at all. Well, okay, okay, Here, here's a possible answer. Um, Snake remembers her, because he was on the ship with her nine years ago, and he thought she was just the best 12-year-old girl ever. Because he was, like, 12 years old at the time as well. Maybe they developed, like, a really loving relationship. <laughs> well, I mean, apparently people fall in love with her pretty easily, so... <laughs> Final question, question number 74. Who kidnapped J-Dog? I know it's zero, but I mean, technically, who was it? Okay, this is also something not too many people know about, but it was June. Really? She's weird. Got this... <laughs> She's I got like... a huge kidnapping organization. Why not send someone else to do it? Mary, maybe she wanted to kidnap Junpei herself. No, that's exactly the answer, because she had Santa and her cohort to kidnap everybody besides J-Dog. <laughs> She's like, well, he's the weakest. I can outmuscle him. Oh, or maybe need. it was because like he is he is the most essential essential part of this to making sure she doesn't die. Uh -huh. That is so true. Maybe she wanted to make sure she did it herself to or, leave none. Or up the she's chance. not evil and she just wanted to see him one more time. No, she's evil. No. Oh, no, she's okay, evil. never mind. She's evil. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was already leaning toward not liking her before we started reading this, and now I think she's awful. She's a very, very interesting character, but she's she's unquestionably a bad person. I mean, I like her more as a villain after reading yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think she's much more, like, conniving than I thought, but despite the author's best, like, protests to the contrary, like, no, she's awesome and so pretty, and you should love her. <laughs> yeah, great villain, terrible hero. <laughs> <laughs> that's it after uh 10 videos we finally finished every aspect possible about the <laughs> game 999 except all the endings we didn't get sorry about that yes yeah <laughs> those aren't the, but, uh, like the torture room we totally skipped where we find out about lotus mm -hmm. but uh i just want to say thanks to the apparently hundreds of people that have been watching us play this over the last year or so. It's it's really yeah, this awesome. Is amazing. Yes. I, I've, I've been so happy to see all the comments from people saying how much they've enjoyed watching us bumble through this game and just kind of make fun <laughs> of it. It's, I mean, it's been really cool, really, really great seeing all the support out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we honestly hope we can, you know, like do a video walkthrough for the uh, second game. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a little technologically tricky to put it mildly, but uh, it is something we are hoping to do. Three D, Paul. Three <laughs> our, our current plan involves Michael balancing an iPhone on its side in front of the three DS. As far as we've gotten so far, yes. so it's not very promising at the moment, but we're trying. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for watching, everybody.